Hello, and welcome to How to Adapt a Toy. This is part four in the Adapting Toy series. This is the final video in which we'll review how to actually adapt the toy. My name is Kate Mosley, and I'm an AT specialist. I am a task employee that contracts with STAR to provide AT webinars and trainings. You can view these trainings at www.startraining.org. This PowerPoint will be available upon request. Please email me at tasc at ucphuntsville.org to request the PowerPoint or if you have any questions about any of the videos in this module. So just a little bit about TASK and STAR before we get started. TASK stands for Technology Assistance for Special Consumers. We do AT consultations, informal sessions, and technical assistance. STAR is Alabama's assistive technology resource. Together, they collaborate to form al.atforall.com. This website is a lending library where you can check out any of our equipment for two to three weeks. This equipment includes switches, mounts, adaptive toys, communication aids, aids to daily living, computer access tools, and more. So just a little overview about this module. Video 1 reviewed the introduction to toy adapting. Video 2 reviewed how to solder. Video 3 discusses making a port. And video 4 will demo how to adapt a toy. We are going to review the tools needed for toy adaption, steps to adapting a toy, and quick fixes for some problems that you may come across. Now let's review our toolbox. These are some of the tools that you will be needing to adapt a toy. You will need a soldering iron, flux, solder, and a soldering iron stand. If you have any questions about any of these tools or how they work, please review the video on how to solder. You will also need wire strippers, a female switch port, wire cutters, scissors, and paper towels. If you have any questions about the female switch port, please review the Making a Switch Port video. So what is a port? There are male and female ports. Most switches have a standard male port. We will need to attach a female port to our toy so that we can connect the switch to the toy. Please review video 3 for more information about ports. So the steps to toy adapting. First, we're going to want to prepare our station. We're going to make sure that there's nothing that could catch fire and that the soldering iron is in a safe place. Next, we will want to test our toy. We want to make sure that our, our toy is working before we attach the switch to it. Once our toy is working, we will remove the batteries from the toy and turn the toy off. After we turn the toy off, we want to locate the press here switch inside the toy. Most toys will have buttons on their paw if it's an animal toy um, or a place where you're supposed to press to make the toy dance or move or sing. We are going to locate where that button is because there's probably a switch underneath it. We are going to cut open the toy and remove the switch from the toy. If it is not possible to remove the switch, we are going to cut the wire from the switch. Make sure you cut the wires closest to where the switch is and not to the battery pack of the toy. Next, we are going to strip the toy's wires and then twist our port wires to our toy wires. After they're twisted together, we are going to solder that twisted wire, tape over our soldering job, and then test our toy to make sure that it works with our switch. If it does work, we are going to sew any cuts that we made back up and our toy is adapted and ready to go. So when we are attaching a switch to a toy, all we're doing is rerouting the wire. So you can see in this first image, we have the control box where the batteries usually are in the toy and it's connected to the toy's paw. So when we press this play button, the teddy bear may sing or dance. Now, when we're adapting the toy, we're taking the wires that would normally connect to the switch in the paw and rerouting them 
to a female switch port so that we can attach our own standard switch. If your switch is not working, there are a few things you can do to check. First, are the batteries dead or is the off switch on? Second, look at our female port. Is the metal crossing, are the connection between the red and the black wire touching? We want to make sure that they are separate. We also want to test our port. If you have a wire tester like the one in the top left up here, test your wire to make sure that it does have a good connection. If it doesn't, make a new port. If you've gone through this list and you can't find out what's wrong, make an entire new port or buy a new port and try it with that. Don't give up. This switch making is all about problem solving. Use the knowledge you've learned about switches in this module to try to figure out what might be the problem. Sometimes just starting over can fix a mistake. So if you have any questions about this video or any of the videos in this module, please email me at tasc at ucphuntsville.org. I will now demo how to adapt a toy. So here I have all my materials set up. I have the toy that I'm going to be adapting, scissors, paper towel, I have wire cutters and wire strippers, my soldering iron, my stand, flux, solder, um, electrical tape, and then I have just a little bowl where I can place the batteries so they don't roll off the counter. So to start, we are going to take our toy and we are going to open up the back and take out the battery pack if possible. Um, I'm using a MyPal Scout from LeapFrog and it's very nice because it's easy to take the battery pack out. So you can see I just took the battery pack out of the doll. I'm going to remove the batteries and my um, my device is off. Okay, so the batteries have been removed, the device is turned off, and the first thing we're going to do is decide what we want to switch adapt. So my pal Scout has four different buttons. You can see there's a music button, a play button, a night button, and a power on and off. Well, I will have the toy turned on so what I want him to do is be able to play the music. So step one, I'm going to cut a hole in this white fabric so that I can reach inside the toy and access this paw switch. Now some of the toys, the switch might be sewn into the hand and if that's the case, I'm going to cut the wires closest to the paw. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Just make a small cut in the white fabric, just big enough that I can fit my fingers through to find that switch. And we'll be able to sew this up after we're done. Okay, so you can see I made a hole in the white part, and I'm just going to feel up through the hand, go through the stuffing, till I feel that switch. So this one is sewn in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the wires. Let's cut this just a bit more so everyone can see. So there's some wires going into the battery pack, but we're specifically looking for the wires that go through this hand. So I'm going to try to catch it with my finger. Might take a little bit of digging. Okay. So here's my wire. It's this green wire right here, and when I pull on it, the paw's going to move. Now it's important to remember that there's going to be two wires, so you need to locate both of them. If I pull on both these wires, let's see, paw's going to move and paw's going to move. So that's the switch that I'm trying to access. There's always going to be two wires, maybe two wires that are formed together, but you want to find two separate casings. So even if they are um, stuck together and it looks like one, you want to make sure that there's two. Now what I would like to do is cut the wire that is closest to the paw. 
So here is leading to the battery pack, so we want to cut the wires right here where it's leading to the switch. So now if I had the batteries in this toy and I pushed the paw, it would not work because I've just cut that connection. So now I would like to strip these wires, which just means to take the plastic off. So now you can see I have the two switch wires and you can see, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Okay, you can see that there's the gold copper of the wire and then the wire casing for both switches. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to twist those wires together so they form a nice little single wire on both ends. So now we have two twisted wires and we are going to take our switch port. So this is one that I made from a prior video. Uh, please review back to the making a switch port video if you would like to buy one or have questions about how to make these. And all I'm going to do is twist these wires together. So you can see now on the black wire I have twisted it with the green wire. Now we're going to take our flux, dip it in our flux, take our solder and our soldering iron, touch the solder to the soldering iron, and then cover, oops, not make sure not to drip on the toy, cover our wires together. Okay, so there I have the wires soldered together, and I'm just going to dab off any excess flux that I might have, making sure not to drip on the toy. And now I'm going to take my electrical tape, and just wrap it completely over the metal. So there should be no metal showing. And this, again, doesn't have to be very pretty. This is going to be on the inside of the toy, so it doesn't need to look very nice. As you can see, mine does not look very pretty. But now I have the two wires that are connected together. When I pull, they're not going to separate, and they are protected by the electrical tape. So now let's do that with the other side. So we have the second wire of each of these, and we're just going to twist them together just like that. Dip it in flux. And we're going to take our solder and our soldering iron. This time I'm going to first put down my paper towel. and then just solder them together. Wipe off whatever excess we might have. Cover it with another piece of electrical tape. Make sure to cover all of the metal. And there we go. So now we have taken the wire that would normally connect to the music button on this toy and rewired it so that now this will be where we put our switch. So here is our final product. Um, when I press the music button, it's not going to work. But if I open him back up, turn the toy on, he's going to do his little intro singing. So this toy, when you turn it on, it's going to automatically tell you a few things. But you'll, you'll notice that he's going to not move or sing or dance. When I press the music button, he's not going to um, activate of anything. Now if I turn him around, you can see our female switchboard is sticking out the back. I really like using these soft toys with the press here buttons because uh, they usually have a, um, I just pressed the pink button. 
but they have a Velcro attachment and it's easy to slip a wire in and out of there. So what we're going to do, plug him in and as you can see he's not moving at all until I activate the switch. So that's a good way to have a child uh, cause and effect and a lot of good reasons to adapt a toy. If you have any questions about this video or about any part in this module, please email me at tasc at ucphuntsville.org. Thank you so much.